tired of traditional talk? People pontificating about this or that, the left or the right. Sometimes the truth is just all lost in the noise. Having learned life lessons the hard way, Chuck Gallagher, international speaker and author, cuts through the noise to share truth through transparency. Nationally known guests talk about what's important to you, your life, your concerns, and your success. So tune in, turn on to Straight Talk with Chuck Gallagher. Now, here's your host, Chuck Gallagher. And it is great to be with you today. I was listening to the introduction and I heard the line, sometimes the truth is just lost in the noise. And, and I asked myself the question as I heard that, how much of today ended up being noise? How much of it was life happening, uh, demands, calls, text, emails, social media, how much noise took place and how much of the day did I actually spend focusing on living? And, you know, that caused me to, um, to, to really to think, as this show begins, that focusing on what is happening right now is that experience of living, as opposed sometimes to the noise that we get caught up in and the challenges that take place. And for those of you that are regular listeners to the show, you know that my bent, although we will talk about all kinds of things on this show, tends to focus back to the fact that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Although as a human being, we tend to believe that the experience we have is only our experience and sometimes we forget about that connectivity and that connectedness that we have with other people. And, and those things that can happen in life that, um, well, are intentional, but sometimes surprising because we don't anticipate them or have that crystal ball, so to speak, to be able to see where our life journey may be going. Uh, I'm really lucky. I, I, it, it's fun to be a, a radio show host because you get the opportunity to really connect with a lot of very unique and interesting people. And today, my guest, even though this is airing on a Monday, is Tuesday May Thomas. And Tuesday, that's a cool name. I just think that is so neat. So I have to start off with this real simple and dumb question. Were you born on a Tuesday? You know, I was expected to be born on a Tuesday, but I was born on a Friday in the month of May and somewhere in the middle of the doctor sort of giving my mother the, my expectation date, she decided that Tuesday was the coolest name and that no matter when I was born, she would name me Tuesday. And hence, I was born in May, so I got Tuesday May, Thomas. Oh, that is so cool. I mean, you know, some of us have the dubious distinction of being named after our relatives and so forth. And there is a lot of power that goes along with the name, but that really is kind of cool. I mean, you've got a really interesting and neat story. Tuesday has written a book. Now, I'm going to hold it up. I know that for those of you on the radio, you can't see it. Uh, for those of you that might be seeing this via YouTube, the book is Confessions of a Spiritual Apprentice. I love the cover, by the way. I think the Thank cover, you. Yeah, I love the cover. I think it really is cool. But um, this, is, this book is a fascinating read of your life journey up to this point. And, of course, for those of you that might be seeing Tuesday on video, uh, she is a lovely young lady. And so there are many books I know ahead as you journey on your, uh, as you put it, spiritual apprenticeship. But let's start off with uh, a little bit of background about you. Tell us, from your perspective, what motivated you to write the book? Whew. Well, I tell you, um, as you read Confessions of a Spiritual Apprentice, you will learn that I align with a mystical teacher. And she informed me of so much vast information regarding the me metaphysical realm of, of duality, of reality that exists beyond the physical form. And I actually became a little obsessed. I, I created my own romance with, with trying very, very difficultly or very hard to understand 
and how to comprehend what lies beyond the physical realm. I, I wanted to uh, contain it and and be able to put it down into words and share the information with others. Um, and really, it's about that interconnection that you were talking about earlier, Chuck, and that invisible realm that exists all of consciousness and connection and the means through which the highway of thread lines of, of interconnection that we all connect through. And I, I wanted so badly to kind of to harness that and to give it a voice. Um, along my journey, though, I realized that there was a lot of my own personal healing that had to take place. And my whole life, I've always had an issue with expressing myself, with finding my voice. So it's interesting that now I have this platform to speak in. in and, um, and I found that really what's been a lifesaver is being able to journal, to write, to sing, to express my truth. When I was a child, I felt that I did not have a voice. I felt that the world was a very scary place to be in because of what I was told by my family, my friends, my relatives. And, um, and I felt betrayed by life. I, I felt unloved. And I felt very, very afraid of really expanding. And so I shrunk. I didn't have friends uh, to really express or to sort of exchange information or ideas with. And so I tapped into a world of invisibility. At the beginning of the book, I talk about my friends, the invisibles, which are a bunch of invisible entities that I actually invited into my room and would assemble a little sort of teacher area where I would I would take notes and sort of share with these invisibles in, in and amongst my, uh, my stuffed animals information that I cannot remember. Now I'm sure if I was hypnotized or something, I could delve back. But I had such a strong connection with something that was outside of, of, of things that I could literally see and feel. I felt like that there was no world for me here and whatever I saw or tapped into, uh, I, I didn't like it and it, and it really, it really uh, caused me to fear what being alive was. And so I tapped into a realm that was beyond the physical. Over my life, I took, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes. No, so, so, so let me ask you a question. In, in that process, um, Obviously, this journey started fairly young. So, it, it, go back to, to, to that young age, and what was taking place in life, if, if you can share, what was taking place in life that made you feel um, unloved, that made you feel like you needed to shrink and that you didn't have that voice? What was that life experience? You know... I felt unloved by my mother, honestly. I was given information by other family members that uh, made me be afraid of being a woman or a girl in the world, to, that made me fear the energy of men and, and sexuality. Um, because I kind of came into this lifetime without the ability to speak up, but with a very brave and compassionate heart, this is what caused my confusion is, is I would trust, I would be so open to everyone everywhere, and yet I would be taken advantage of. I had sexual experiences, which I feel so many of us do in our very early, early ages, like from five to 10 and even maybe beyond, that can really impact us. And if we don't know, I was never told or given uh, given information or tools when I was younger of how to navigate if, if you're having a sexual experience in your youth and how to create healthy boundaries for yourself, let alone right. speak up for yourself. And, um, and so this sort of created these predicaments that I would get into with my so-called friend, and uh, which really opened me up into my sexuality. I think maybe, I don't know, everything really is in alignment with the highest good, but back for many years, I always felt like, man, I was like opened up way too early to a world of information that I think I could have been a little more protected or been given some tools and told, you can use your voice to create healthy boundaries, to say no, to learn how to respect yourself, and this created this whole uh, grid, if you will, for my whole life to go along where I feared men, I feared feeling beautiful or attractive or drawing attention to myself, I feared my own sex and sexuality and expressing it or even feeling it and what that might feel like. I, I was afraid to express myself. Um, I, I was bullied as a child in school. I gained weight. I think because of the sexual experiences I was enduring while I was a youth and not being able to express my, my emotional confusion or frustration, I ate and I gained weight and I, and I, and I was really 
uh, uh, with a lot of weight gain and then I would lose weight over and over. I was bullied, manipulated. I was just, I just got the whole, you know, the wave just crushed me over and over again. And I thought, God, this world sucks. Get me out of here. <laughs> uh, now, what's it for? Do, do, do you... Okay, so I have to ask this question. As we explore uh, Confessions of a Spiritual Apprentice, it, it's interesting to me, and I, I've got a very dear friend who was uh, sexually abused as a child, a female. And so I, and I have to ask the question, uh, because of your gender, do you tend to find or believe that... Uh, it's more apt for a female to be sexually abused and to experience some of those challenges that you experienced as a child so that you would, would again, shrink and, and not use your voice because as a child you're not taught how to. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting. I feel that the more this conversation happens and the more I share um, intimately with friends, and loved ones, I find out that it's across the board, both male and females, almost equally go through a similar experience, whether it's someone in the family, an uncle, a stepfather, uh, the mom's boyfriend with the son, the daughter, that there's a, a, a spectrum of what we can say inappropriate circumstances and experience that that can become ripe in, in certain situations. And it is very, very interesting it's, it almost seems that 90%, and that's just, I'm kind of pulling that out of the air, but of people that I've spoken to have had these experiences, and we're all marked with this from a very early age, and that creates right. like those lenses of perception of how we move in the world, or how we react or shrink or expand our energy. It's interesting as you say that, because the, co you know, the, the conversation that we're having is, is, is live and in the moment. It is not as if this is canned or staged. So I don't know what you're going to say or you don't know the question that I'm going to ask. But the one thing that I'm absolutely finding is it's a fascinating conversation. Now, as we begin this, I've got music in the background that says, okay, it is time for a uh, commercial break. This is Chuck Gallagher, this is Straight Talk Radio, and my guest is Tuesday May Thomas. She is the author of Conf Confessions of a Spiritual Apprentice, and we'll be right back. You want to stick with us. The story is fascinating. Chuck Gallagher with Straight Talk Radio, and we are back with Confessions of a Spiritual Apprentice. Tuesday, May Thomas is my guest. We've we started exploring Tuesday your background and, and kind of the motivation that got you to the place where you wrote this book. And, and I have to say to you, and it's kudos, congratulations to you, because I've talked with a lot of people who have said, I just can't find my voice. And for those of us who uh, don't seem to have a problem and perhaps talk too much, <laughs> it, it, is, it is incredibly powerful when someone moves from shrinkage to expansion and to be able to find that voice and to allow that voice to express and know the power that's associated with that. Uh, you may not know who will listen to, and I certainly won't, this show, but yet you know that whomever needs to hear the message will hear that. And coming from a background of, um, of abuse as a child, at some point you said in our very first segment that you connected with someone that helped you see a realm that was beyond. What was the story? How did you, how did you get from... Uh, and I'm going to use my term now, but shrinking violet to someone that could help you um, aliven and open up to a, a different dimension. Okay, so I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Um, right. I have, I, we were sharing during the break for, it's so funny because while I was never able to speak up to bullies or to someone I felt was taking advantage of me, yet when I felt the call to, I could sing a song. And so I okay. always had that, that voice inside of me. Um, and I think that's the thread that kind of helped me gather more courage and more courage to speak up. 
Um, so I, I wrote something here that I, that I just want to tie into what we're saying. Um, I found my power through finding my voice as I aligned with my mystical teacher. And um, through finding my voice, I, I further learned that my voice was interconnected to a universal system that responds to my words. Um, I realized that everything is alive and that that world when I was a child that I felt so intimately connected to as a youth really does exist. That there is something going on in the space in between of what appears in our third dimension. And um, quite literally, my teacher showed, showed us so much, but, but ultimately it has to do with self-love and being a conscious co-creator. If you think about it, we say stuff all day every day and if we wrote on a chalkboard if every sentence we thought and every sentence we spoke was written on a chalkboard and at the end of the day you went and you saw what you thought or you said be like oh my gosh and i'm sure we would erase like a bunch of things and then Absolutely. We'd be, right we'd just be left with like maybe the most positive or powerful or self-affirming sort of things that help lift us up in spirit and what i learned with my teachers if we can put our attention away from focusing on what's wrong or what's negative and really just steer and come into further of affirmation of, of what is positive, of what is um, in alignment, of what your strengths are that you innately have, then what that is connected to is an infinite realm of, 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 um, of information that can give you even more strength or more talent or more gifts as you're ready to connect with them. It's, it's No, well, look, but look, let me ask this question. Um, as I hear you say that, now let me make sure I say this correctly, when you were able to find your voice or you were able to express it more, as that thread connected you, you found that your voice connected with a, 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 a larger system, your voice then allowed the larger system to activate to bring more consciousness to you and to bring you a greater voice. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, I love I love uh, hearing it regurgitated and, and recommunicated, and it's so interesting because my whole journey is about this voice. Um, you know, sometimes we feel like God, I should be able to like do this interview and be you know sharper and cleaner and more cool and calm and collected, but it's it's the constant initiation. And that's where the power is. It's like stepping up into it. And I learned with my teacher that in using our voice, that those thoughts that we think, the words that we speak have so much value. They have so much potency and it's like a currency. Every thought I think is, is not only in turn connecting me to the thoughts that everyone else is thinking that have a similar frequency, a similar vibration, but it's also pulling those thoughts and that energy to me. So if I connect in a positive affirmation way and say like, I am strong enough, I am good enough, I can do this, I got this, I'm gonna trust, I'm gonna put it in God's hands or whatever it will be, that's gonna connect me with that faith, with that strength, and it's gonna interconnect me with everyone else that's, that's like on that energy level, that's putting energy into that pipeline, so to speak, into that grid, and I'm gonna connect into it, and it's gonna connect into me. Versus I connected to limiting behaviors, thoughts, or beating myself up. I'm going to connect with all that other strata that exists in the universe. One can nourish me and one can really starve me. It's interesting that you say that. Um, I, I absolutely believe what you're saying. And, and, and I experienced that. I'm not going to say, by the way, that um, uh, I'm a spiritual guru <laughs> by the stretch of the imagination. But I do think that it's fascinating that what we speak and how we feel and how we communicate that does, in fact, connect us. I had a, a good friend say to me one time, she said, you know, you're the golden child. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She says, well, you just say something and something happens. And she said, you know, it just seems like you're so lucky. Well, uh, but I expect to be lucky. I, I expect that I'm good. I, I, you know, you are right. How you feel about yourself internally connects you into the power grid. And if you're a, if you've got a 110 connection, you're only going to get 110 volts. If you've got a 220 connection, you're going to get 220. But you have to be willing to be whichever that is. Absolutely. I like to think about the yin yang. And even though the old, I think, uh, you know, representation, we think about male and fast. Uh, male and female energy. 
But if we leave that blueprint to the side and just think about love and fear, and maybe the white is love and the black is fear, but there's always a little bit of love in the fear, and there's always a little bit of fear in the love. But the more we give our attention and our energy to consciously, again, consciously, because the mind is going a million places, we can be happy one moment and disappointed the next, all coming out of our center of what the media tells us, what the world tells us, but we get to be a master of our time and space and decide and make a conscious choice, right? I know your one of your taglines is, is like, uh, for every choice, there's a consequence. And right. it's so intimately connected to this because the more I choose love, the more I choose things that are just, just being nice to myself, just being good and nurturing to myself. Well, I'm going to start having more of that in the environment of my internal mind, body, emotions, and I'm going to be plugging into more and more of that. So if a little bit of darkness comes, if a little bit of something comes to take me off my center, I've got so much love and light around me. I'm like, Psh, I got this. And it just rolls off. But right. I go down and I get depressed and my old issues come up and I'm, uh, and I'm crying and, and I'm like, start to feed that, what we call the tar body, that old, you know, those old uh, grooves of pain, of sorrow, of hurt. And we sort of bring them back to life. Then, you know, I can get suspended in that and then everything dark and I'll become a magnet through the law of vibration for all those forces to then bring me down. But there's always that little bit of light in there, like the yin yang. And it's really the tipping point. What, what are we choosing with our thoughts? actions and words is going to help us keep afloat or, you know, start to sink. In your uh, website, beautiful, beautifully done, by the way, but in your website, there's a picture and it says, I'm not sure I can see this without my glasses, but I said, it says, it's choice, not chance that determines your destiny. Right. And I, I think that is so true, especially for the people that are listening to Tuesday May Thomas uh, and her book, Confessions of a Spiritual Apprentice, the issue is what do we choose? Because what we choose creates the chance or the opportunity that creates our future and our destiny. And, you know, you, you are so on to the connection of um, if I wallow in the mud pit, I'm just going to be dirty. Uh, versus deciding that I want to rise from that and and, and embrace a different, more empowering uh, opportunity and, and, and self. Now, you have a thing, you said this a minute ago, you said, I'm a master of my time and space. So tell me before we go to our next break, what does that mean to you? I am a master of my time and space. To me, it's, it's, it's about a couple of things, and to, to clarify, being a master of my time and space means that I am consciously co-creating my internal environment. I'm aware that I, that I can't control the world. I can't control what you're going to do, what my partner's going to do, if someone's going to upset me, but I can, can co-create and be conscious in how I master my emotions, my responses, my thoughts, right? I can govern that environment because this is the internal environment is where everything else is born again it comes back to that 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 dark and that light if i'm going to choose from my center from my um from my highest consciousness that i am putting love putting light in every word or every step i take then by god that is exactly what i'm going to co-create right and so no matter what my environment looks like I can still maintain that peace of mind and that centering. I like to call it heaven on earth. I have had experiences in this last year while I'm finishing up with the book of like really being released from all those old uh, tars and pain that have held me down for so long and stepping into really getting self mastery of like uh, mastering the mind, mastering the mind stuff has helped me to feel so free of the ties that bind on the earth plane that I've actually felt heaven on earth. I feel like it's really possible. I've had one foot in the earth and like one foot on a heavenly realm, but I know it all starts in here with what I perceive from the inside out. And because right. I'm choosing more and more love, love, light, 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 I can't help but just see that in my surroundings and I'm less inclined to judge things or to react negatively or to take for all these old things and patterns of belief systems to be ignited and activated i can move in the world and not be of it but still be compassionate and feel human connection but it's really powerful master of time and space being a master of that is like 
is deep because it connects to your past. If you're still walking with all of your wounds from the past, you're going to be hurt over and over again, as I was. So I'm hearing the music in the background, which says it is time for a commercial break. Talking about time and space, and you also mentioned the tar body. So I tell you what, for those that are listening here, this is Tuesday May Thomas, Confessions of a Spiritual Apprentice is her book. You can find it on Amazon.com or you can go to TuesdayMayThomas.com and find out all about Tuesday. We're going to come back after this break. Thanks. The book is Confessions of a Spiritual Apprentice by Tuesday May Thomas. This is Chuck Gallagher with Straight Talk Radio, and this has been a fascinating conversation thus far. In the um, Tuesday, in the last segment, I got this visual image that was incredibly disturbing, I'm sorry, which was, what in the world would happen if every word I spoke was on a freaking whiteboard, and at the end of the day, I could look at it and then say, oh, crap. I can't say on the radio what I'd like to say or what comes to mind, but I imagine most people understand the idea because as much as I think I'm conscious of what I say, I wonder in the scope of a day how unconscious I might be, and you and I both know there's power in words. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the practice of being conscious and maybe that, that chalkboard or that whiteboard idea um, just brings to rise the ability to, to practice more awareness and to, to practice putting into words that which we really wish to bring into our experience. Um, I think we kind of get lazy with words. We, we're still in an age, I think, where we are not appreciating the real potency and the power. Some people have really tapped it. And like you, you say, I think you were mentioning you have like a golden touch maybe, right? Sometimes we can say things um, and really they can come into manifest manifestation quite instantly. And that's kind of the picture. I know we're going to get back into the word thing here, but the picture of this, this grid of interconnected, invisible, collective consciousness. Imagine that like every, every possibility exists there. I like, to, even though I'm not a scientist, I like to pretend, right, when I have a glass of wine that I'm like channeling Einstein or, or Max Planck. And imagine that, that zero space that Planck talked about. And if we go in deep, that it's like this causal realm where Particles of light exist, but they are not in form and not, um, they're not, they're, they're coming into and out of creation. There's nothing set yet, but it's what we decide, how we look at it, that contributes to how it reflects back to us, right? So in that sense, as we learn to, to realize the value and the power of what we are putting in is a part of what we're going to get back, that can help us to sort of erase and be clear about what we want to see on our chalkboard coming back to us in life. Um, and talking about words, I, I know during the break we were sharing, and it's so funny because I had these ideas last night in bed, and I had to get up and write them. The power of words, uh, you know, talking to a friend, and they might say, "Don't even tell me about that. That's going to stress me out," or "I can't even, I can't even talk about that because I'm going to get too sad." Um, uh, remember Kate Bush? Just saying it can even make it happen. Remember that song? It's like she right. was in. She knew something beyond. Right. Um, and I was giving the example that the other day I was joking with a friend saying, oh yeah, right, like an earthquake's going to happen. How she ran around the room touching every piece of wood she could to kind of undo the words that I said. And I was like, oh, right. there's a cool example, you know, right. where people, we don't think about it, but we really do give a lot of weight to words. Absolutely. It's, it's funny that you say that because, um, if you contrast my wife and myself, both of us manifest now. On my end, I'm I'm a comedian of sorts, so I will I'll pull someone's leg in a heartbeat. And and I've told my wife, I said, the cosmic spiritual universe knows that I'm full of you know what. So they know when I'm really kidding and there's no power to it. On her side, however, she must be surrounded with people that are like super serious. One day she said to me, she said, you know, I don't know, I'm just kind of tired of this car. And within 30 minutes, she had totaled her automobile, walked away from it, but totaled it. 
So I have, in many cases, told her, be careful what you say. And if I say something she thinks, mm, that's not good, she'll say, you need to cancel it. Cancel, cancel. Mm -hmm. So that it takes it back because there is incredible power in what we say. Because it does tap us into the grid of potentiality and possibility. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh Words hold weight. Words, we share a common language or, or many different languages in different cultures. And we all share the feeling and some crisscross pollination of definition of what words have. And when we speak them, we are plugging into whatever else anyone else has put or pertained into that word, that consideration. And I always like to think about that, that grid where it's like a domino effect. And there's a law, as I talk about in the book, that is the highest good. Whenever we ask for something or wish to manifest or call in, that it's always for the highest good of all. So we're not, we're not forcing anyone or anything's will, but we are getting clear about what it is we wish to experience. And through that clarity of thought, of speech, we, we, we activate the feeling realization, and that begins to create the particles that magnetize, that, that creates the vibration within us that begins to magnetize that and those particles of light in our reality to manifest and come into us, uh, whatever it is we wish, in the right time and space, especially if we can keep ourselves detached and patient and trusting with that grace. But your wife's story, just, just quickly, it's like my mom she was, oh, I can't, I'm too lazy. I haven't been to the gym in forever, but she'd been talking about it for six months. But the grids, the energy was waiting for her, her body, she was ready to like start working out. And she, she said, oh my God, the first day I went back to the gym, I lost 10 pounds. It's like, <laughs> it's like some things are just waiting for us to put our light on them so they can run energetically and come into being, um, you know, whether, wh whatever it is. Now, I've got, a, I've got several questions, and I don't want us to run out of time. We're in the third segment of our show here. But if, if I like what you've said because it's kind of like, okay, there's this grid. There's energy in the grid. The question becomes, can we tap into it? Okay. So if we tap into the energy grid, uh, talk to me about energy manipulation. What did, because the word manipulation, as a word itself, tends to have a negative connotation, not a positive one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, let's see. I, I know I have experienced um, a great amount of that in my life. And I think basically manipulation is, is a teacher. And as we step into our power and gain clarity of, of who we are and what, what we value within ourselves, our time, our space, and learn self-love and self-respect, that, that light that we garner within ourselves brings a light to that is that manipulation. It feels to me that manipulation, people that operate through using manipulation are hungry. They have not maybe developed an awareness or an ability to create, to co-create with the universe of their own light. And so perhaps they're calling on different forces um, to use in order to manifest. Or they might see a weakness in someone and, and, and use them in order to, to get what they want out of them because that individual hasn't clicked into that level of fine-tuning their own spiritual or psychic sort of hygiene or awareness and, and creating a sacred space for themselves. So it's a good teacher, though, to learn by. Now, it's interesting you said something that I would like to tap into, because I can envision a lot of people listening to this, and you, you, know, you started off as a, as a child in... Uh, I'm going to call it an abusive situation or potentially abusive situation, but somewhere you learned uh, to find the truth of yourself and um, I'm not sure what the right word is, I'm searching for it right now, to create that force field that goes around you to protect yourself, but yet in the manipulation uh, comments you said, well, you know, some people may not be that tuned to themselves and someone can find that entryway. So what, what could you offer the people who are listening to uh, think about, well, you know, maybe I'm not completely tuned or, or I, I am energetically or psychically attacked, so to speak. How does one provide that, that protection? Yeah, you know, it's it, that we could do like probably 32 shows back to back and like have <laughs> talk about this, right? But I think some basic things to set up are, are um, 
any anything that will allow you to be aligned with your higher self, which is a meditation practice, a pranayama, a breathing practice, something that's going to take you out of the world and bring you more into your sense of center. From there, all the senses become heightened and we are more tuned to becoming a, a sort of like a tuning rod. And your intuition and your gut is always talking to you. We're always getting information and the internal, discerning the internal from the external is so important. So those little practices to bring you into centering so you can really feel what feels right to you, what feels appropriate to you, but we don't always know. And that's okay. We can't beat ourselves up, right? But we have to go with what is the most in tune with self-love. What really serves me? What doesn't serve me? Now, on the flip side of that, we're not always always ready to meditate every day or every moment. What I like is the white wall of fire. Imagine creating a ring of light, a radius about two or three feet all the way around you and just boom, just make it so, imagine it, put it in place. And from that ring of light, <laughs> shoots up like a castle of white flaming stones. Like imagine just a huge castle within that radius that shoots up and the white wall of fire burns all around you allowing you to be with absolute clarity, burns away any veils of illusion. Because sometimes people that are manipulators are shysty, they, got, they know what to say, so they know how to say it, they know maybe they can see your weaknesses that you are revealing that you're not aware. We're, we're vulnerable at times, we're human, sometimes we're up, we're down, and that might be the way they get in. I know sometimes I've just been lonely and, and looking for a friend, and so I might open myself up too much too soon in a friendship and then feel like, oh man, that wasn't, now I realize they're not going to value or respect what I've shared and it's too late, but you can't beat yourself up. You got to, you know what, you know what I like to do as well is to go back in time. If you feel that that has ever happened, erase it on your board of memories, erase it and put love there. And oh, that's powerful. It's, that is it's, very powerful. Simple, and it's probably the one that's easiest to remember, but you erase it and you put love there. Because as long as it's in your environment, in your mind, in your heart, in your emotional wiring, if you keep perceiving that you've been threatened, that you've been hurt, that's going to that's gonna keep firing up, and you're going to live in that stress and that shrinkage versus the expansion and the relaxing and your power, being a master of your time and space. If you can put love there over and over and over again, that love is going to be those stepping stones. It's going to allow you... To, to reside in your grace, in your calm, in your peace, and in your truth, which is like, people pay millions of dollars to try to find that, right? It's like right. This, this, what is it? How do I find it? Well, it's already in there. If we can just settle down, take a breath, you know, and, and practice self-love and be conscious of where we're putting our energy, right? We were talking about this. Where you put your energy is what you're gonna get back. My guest is Tuesday May Thomas. She says, I am a master of my time and space. And I think for those of you that have been listening, you can understand why that is and the many, many valuable uh, insights that we get here on Straight Talk Radio. Her book is Confessions of a Spiritual Apprentice. It's available on Amazon. I highly encourage you to pick it up and we'll be back talking a little bit more about personal power and a multitude of things in our last segment. Stick with us. This is Chuck Gallagher with Straight Talk Radio. It's Confessions of a Spiritual Apprentice by Tuesday May Thomas. Uh, for those that might be seeing this on video, here is a copy of her book. It's got a really cool cover, but more important than that is the incredible content. I have had the opportunity to read this book, and Tuesday, one of the things that that really struck me is... and. Uh, and I'll tell you why in just a second, but it really struck me that you were keeping a journal and apparently have done this for some period of time. Um, and I really understand the power of that. Uh, for the people that listen on the radio show, I wrote a book called Second Chances, and a, a, a good portion of that book came from a journal that I kept while I was in federal prison. And it was a uh, a cathartic experience to keep the journal, but more important, it kept me connected with what was happening as it was happening, knowing that there was some value, I just couldn't put my finger on what at the time. And so talk a little bit about your life in journaling and how that kind of transformed the creation of this book. Mm. I think it's so potent as, as a means to express. We have so many feelings and emotions and experiences that impress upon us 
a, 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 an infinitude of, of, of colors and kept inside um, depending on what these feelings or emotions are, they can really fester and, and, and turn into darkness and make us turn into darkness. But if we give it a voice, even if we can't find the physical voice in our own privacy to, to give a rise and a release to the information and, and the expression of the feelings we have in ourselves, it's actually, it's a healing. Every time I open a journal, whether I write, I say in my book that, you know, writing in a journal is a different voice for me than sometimes I dictaphone and I'll speak out loud in journal and that's a different voice coming through. If I'm writing on the computer, it's a different voice, but I, I allow that voice, all the different voices to have their own expression. It's cathartic. It's a healing you know, as you say. And I think that in itself has been a thread and I still do it to this day. I have boxes of journals here that I'll, that I'll dip in and out of over time. And, uh, and you get to see, you get to see your growth. You get to go back and say, whoa, wow, this is where I've come from. This is, uh, this is such a, such an amazing, you know, mountain I've climbed. We all have such an intricate past and, and everything is relative, you know, um, right. hurt and pain, hardships, it's it's interesting as you say that with with the idea of a journal and for those that are listening I, I have to really say I do strongly encourage that because in, in our lives those of us that are visual uh, yeah I'm a I'm an avid photographer and so I'm always taking pictures and and of course in the old days when it was film well there was a cost to it and you had to develop it and 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 now it's digital so you know you stick the memory card in and you can erase it and so. If I'm around, especially grandkids, it's like snappity snap snap. They think I'm paparazzi, uh, which maybe that should be my grandfather name. I hadn't thought of that till now. <laughs> but but the pictures are captured, which show that uh, development of of our lives visually, but Ooh, like emotionally, it. the journey, the journal creates that expression of our lives at a deeper level, and that really is very powerful. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's so secret. You know, when I was little, I had a diary that had a lock on it, you know, and I would hide the key. It's like that place where you can, if you trust it enough, because even sometimes I like I write in code because I'm like, is someone going to read? Because that was a part of my being betrayed when I was a kid is like I did. I had no privacy. I didn't feel like I had anything that I could keep sacred. So I developed this code. But even still, if you can let yourself really let go and release that stuff, <sighs> how clear and how much lighter you feel from release it's, it's really a powerful, powerful thing. I encourage, I, I tell you, it has saved my life. It has saved my life. It has helped me put my thoughts into order. It has helped me have reflection, you know, by taking a step away and releasing, giving that stuff a place to go other than festering and being inside here. And, and especially if you can't find the voice to say it, well, you know, say it to spirit, give it to God or whatever that is for you and, and, and let it have a, have a means to release itself from you. Now, one of the things, and I want to do this before we run out of time, because it always seems to go so much faster than, I, than I'm accustomed to or, or want to believe, but you've talked a couple of times about a tar body. What's a tar body, and how is that relevant to our listeners? Okay, tar body, imagine imagine every every hurt feeling, every pain, uh, painful experience you've ever gone through. Imagine every glass of wine or joint you've smoked or every drug, whether it's a medication or otherwise that you've ever taken. Um, imagine environmental pollutions, all the residual stuff that our kidneys, our liver, our body has to process, right, in order for us to just stay healthy. Um, imagine that magnitude of stuff, right, the residual toxins in that, but then even more than that, that's the image, the pardon me, the emotional aspect of what we've perceived of being hurt and the pain that we store inside of ourselves. And I have something written here. Oh my gosh, I want to read it really quick. Okay. So um, your pain is your fear, right? And you have experiences that you perceive as hurtful and that hurt turns into pain. And if it's unattended, that pain turns into fear and that fear ends up driving our lives. And that fear is the tar body. Imagine there's the light body and the tar body. The light body is attuned with our, I like to say our mastery. It's like our blueprint of self mastery and higher self. Whereas the tar body is the exact opposite of that. Now, again, that tipping point, if we feed the tar body too much and give in to negative thoughts, self hate, self doubt, worry, uh, being skeptical, about life in the world or feeling the world is out to get us, we're going to feed that tar body. And if we feed it enough, I feel like it activates and it literally becomes this 
body of tar of toxins and the more that we you know the more down we get oh i'll just have another wine i'll just uh, like you don't care and everything's just going downhill and that tar body festers off of self-hate self-doubt and self-loathing but we turn the tide there's always that love even in the dark you know depths of darkness and if we can choose that love that light i like to say starve the tar body feed the light body right because if we give enough energy to the tar body that is what ends up being our navigational force through through fear through the lenses of fear through the lenses of limitation through the lenses of worry self-hate stress whatever all that stuff is guilt shame worry that's going to be everything in our life then that tar body is going to begin to become a magnet for more of itself the relationships we draw in the opportunities that we're seeking are going to always have that that dingy stain of that like tar it's going to continually reflect back to us what our words are saying where we're putting our beliefs our energy and attention and if it's like i you know i'm no good um nothing good ever happens to me i i, I can't be loved i'm totally unlovable or whatever it is Sure, the tar body is going to make sure you're feeding it that information. It's going to make sure that it's going to steer you. And because your will is weak, you're not aligned with your higher self to hear maybe the other path calling. You're going to say, okay, I'm going to go with the tar body. Oh, you see, I got messed over again. Oh, you see, it happened again. You know, right. But if you can branch off and have that courage to take those little baby steps of, of you know, self-acceptance and exploring self-love. And even if it's just that little baby step at a time, again, that tipping point, we begin to surround ourselves more and more with that love, activate that within. And that love and that light opens the way then for us to take the next step through the light body, through that higher self that we already are. You know, it's... It's kind of interesting, as I hear you say that, there's a, a certain level of frustration that just hit me, and I'll tell you what that's about, and it has nothing to do with you. You yeah. are right on, but I remember when the book The Secret came out, talking about the law of attraction. It was highly successful. Yeah. The frustration is, is it seemed to focus so much on the law of attraction for physical monetary manifestation, and the reality is we manifest everything around us every day. And the problem becomes, and you've really nailed it so well, if, if I feed the tar body, the tar body is going to continue to get mired in the tar, in the muck. And, and then people are like, well, you know, I just don't have any luck. This is just the way my life is. Well, yeah, because that's what you're speaking, because you're feeding it, and the law of attraction is working perfectly. You're just looking at it backwards from where it could be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and I think you would agree with this. All of us are really our light selves. We might be in human form, which is far denser from an energy perspective, but we really are our light selves. Yeah. Now, I hear the music playing, which says, gosh, this program is coming to an end. But before we finish up, First thing I want to say, congratulations Tuesday on a wonderful book. The book is Confessions of a Spiritual Apprentice. It's available on Amazon.com. You are a wonderful guest, and, and I am so uh, thrilled by reading your book and seeing all of the many things that we've just touched the surface on that are in this very uh, deep book that brings light to many folks that might find themselves stuck in the tar body and, and a little bit in darkness. There is a light and you have brought that. Uh, if you want to know more about Tuesday May Thomas, one, you can go to her website, Tuesday May, M-A-Y Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S dot com, Tuesday May Thomas. It's a really cool website. You'll learn some things. Tuesday, I am not a yoga person, but after watching some of your videos, I'm thinking to myself, I probably should be. <laughs> and with all that said, for those of you that are listening to the show, this is Chuck Gallagher with Straight Talk Radio. Tuesday May Thomas says, I am a master of my time and space. You can be as well. Tune in next week for more information on Straight Talk Radio, and thank you for joining us. 
You've been listening to Straight Talk with Chuck Gallagher. Tune in each week on TransformationTalkRadio.com each Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern as Chuck Gallagher, international speaker and author, cuts through the noise to share truth through transparency. Nationally known guests talk about what's important to you, your life, your concerns, and your success. Visit ChuckGallagher.com for more information and turn on to Straight Talk with Chuck Gallagher.